You can never solve a problem or a challenge in your life or your health until you fully accept what you're dealing with, right? And so co coming out and saying, hey, to my health community, I'm having a health problem, right? And you're supposed to be the healthy one, the leader what, and whatever. Yeah. And then coming out and saying, I have a health problem. Like, I think it's the smartest thing you could have done. And, and I'm sure you got way more support than you could have anticipated. Um, yeah, because when you're, to tears. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. Because when you're, when you are transparent about what's going on with yourself and you are dealing with the challenge, people actually show up for you in a really, really wonderful way. And the people who don't show up for you, well, they can go on their own way. You know, <laughs> you don't need them in your right. life anyway. Yeah. It's like, okay, and if they're not going to show up for you when you're down, then, then why, why would you want them around? Right. And then I learned also the people who quote unquote didn't show up or a lot of them was fear it right. was it was that they it was a version of their love that they were and and i include that and my mom knows like my mom was one of them like she she's like she, <laughs> hypocrites you're going to hypocrites like what is that <laughs> like she was so mad so mad at me like because she didn't want me to die you know and and so i had a temporarily and and god that's the other part of having like who whoever you choose your life partner may may if you're dating who if you're watching this you're dating someone may may you really think about are you with a life partner that's there through thick and thin through the mud and and i have to say my wife did everything with me you know and this tough she's like this tough you know uh, we call her juvin she's half jewish half cuban and and she tapped into that side where it was really scary. She didn't know either. Like there was no stats. She's a number. There's no stats to like if wheatgrass and sprouts and, you know, fasting, water fasting and cold. It, there's no, you know, you can read about it and, and you hear these amazing stories, but like um, there was, there were so many scary moments. So I always think back to like the people who were, who were against the protocol that I chose, it was out of, a lot of it was out of fear. And, um, and it was a temporary, like I, part of my principles, my love principles is like, at, sometimes you have to temporarily let go of people because they may not see the vision you have, but if it's your vision, if it's your dream, whether if it's, you know, it, something that, and that for me was really important. I have to set boundaries temporarily so that I can just do what I have to do. Cause this feels, this feels right. It was just in alignment. And if I would have listened, if I would have done it any other way, if I would have been like, I'm doing this because it's just no good. I, I truly believe that. Like, as long as every decision I made, I consulted God, spirit, angels, I prayed on it and made choices from courage. And that's, that's, that's my, my, that's what I do every single day. I choose love. Like, how can I, how can I sit and, and really connect to what's in alignment, my thoughts, my actions, my words. And that's how I make choices. Mm. I remember when we last spoke uh, two, three years ago. Um, I think it's been a couple of years already. Yeah, yeah, it has yeah. Been time, time is flying. That you, <laughs> you told me you feel like your cancer was was um, more emotional than anything. And mm -hmm. at and, and you mentioned a little bit earlier in this interview too that like the emotional healing part has been essential for you. And, you know, you, you got to dive into a lot of that, into kind of the therapy and the different practices that you experienced at, at Hippocrates. But what, what was the emotional part that you, if you don't mind sharing, that you, what was the emotional journey you went through, that healing process that you went through? What did that look like and what did the other side of it look like? So it was, it was, I really dove into like Louise Hay. Um, she has the Heal Your Body, the little blue book. And um, I had always followed her. And I'll never forget opening the blue book. And it, under cancer, it says, you know, grief, deep hurt, pain. And then under breasts, anything going on with the breasts, it says over nurturing, right? Over nurturing of others, putting yourself last. And so, following really diving deep in any therapy session or anything that I did really diving deep into different traumas that you know that has happened in my life so I made a clear decision of I'm going to heal my heart I'm going to take the caution tape off I'm, and and like I said um one of the nurses there in Hippocrates Wellness she was just like all right this is 
this is this is not the time to to all of a sudden like you to try to because I remember sitting down in the nurse like I'm ready whatever you guys have to do I was you know gonna follow through da, da, da. Um, but she's like this is your time to give yourself permission to be a beautiful mess and in that I relaxed and make made that decision to dive deep into the hurt of past experience and one of them was um, did I truly truly heal and grieve you know uh, my first marriage, right? So one of them was unfortunately, you know, my first marriage ended up where um, he took his life. May he rest in peace. And um, there was trauma around that, that I moved forward with exercise. I over-exercised. I, I pushed through. I, I didn't really sit and grieve the separation, the divorce, the all the feelings, all, you know, that comes with it. Um, I just moved forward and I realized that hurt was still there. Like that pain was still there. It was, it was an energy, a vibration. I feel that was kind of like stuck. And this was an opportunity for me. This wake up call was like, let's do it. Let's ugly cry. Let's, I mean, really go in and then backtrack like then I had abandonment issues with my father and there was just so many layers unpeeling of the onion that I went fearlessly in I mean healing circles and in my therapy EMDR like just uh, just constantly open I was an open book I'm like let's do it let's talk let's get raw about it there's I want to live you know I want to live and I don't believe chopping off my breast for me personally was going to completely heal. It could have temporarily done whatever, but I want to live like I want to live a fulfilling life. I want to live with love and I want to lead with love. I want to live a passionate life. So let's do this. And in that was some really dark, dark moments of facing, you know, betrayal, abandonment, all those those things that we run away from. This cancer was my teacher to just face it. And I didn't have to do it alone, you know? Thank you for listening to this short clip from the Nathan Crane podcast. Please share this on social media. And to listen to the full podcast, visit NathanCrane.com.